So here we've got our snapdragons that we started in the quarter cell tray. So I've left them until they're a lot less fragile and easy to pick up. So you can see they've got their true leaves now and it'll be easy to prick out. And I'm gonna move them into the quarter cell tray so each seedling's got enough space. You don't really wanna leave them any longer than this. You wanna leave them long enough so they're not fragile, but not too long that all the roots knit together inside the tray. So first of all, I'm just going to loosely add some compost to the tray. And I'm not going to fill it up completely because some of the seedlings might come out with quite a large root ball, in which case it'll be really difficult to dig a hole and then try and wedge the seedling in the hole. So they might need to go into an empty cell and then backfill all around. But I want to make sure I have some cells filled with compost ready so that if they come out, and they've only got a few roots and not too much compost attached, they've got somewhere to go straight away and then they won't dry out. I'll put you up in the holster so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, if you possibly can, it's a good idea just to tip the whole tray out. Water it well first to make sure that the seedlings are not dehydrated before you start. And then what I'm gonna do is just gently tease them apart. There we go, just start separating them. Oh, look at that one. That's come out of its own bit of compost and it's quite small, so straight away, let's just dip a little hole and then lower him in. I'm gonna water this tray from underneath to make sure that they're really well hydrated and then that will settle the compost. So you can just gently tease them apart. I'll dip a hole for this one, there we go. Just make sure you don't grab the stalk. They're, they're not delicate anymore, but you want to make sure that you don't grab the stem too tightly because you might snap it. So this one's got quite a bit of roots. So I'll try and scoop it up. And then this one can go into one of the empty cells. Just move it forward so you can see. So I'll just lever that in, hold it by the leaf, and then I'll just push some compost in all around. Get rid of any lumps. There you go, and I've got some more here. So just very gently teasing apart. Now, not all seedlings will tolerate being pricked out. So make sure you check the individual varieties, but snapdragons do not mind at all. So I've got a hole for this one. You can see me allowing him in. So the compost is not tightly packed because I want to make it nice and easy to make a hole. And then, as I say, we'll water the tray and then we can always give it a top dressing again later. So this one's got quite a big root ball. So I'll pop that one into an empty cell, holding it there in the center and then just grab some compost and fill that all around. And then this one is a little bit more delicate. So I will dip a hole for that one. In you go. Cover you over. And I'll just grab some more, move that one out of the way. There's one here that's just fallen away. Lower him in. Get some compost. And the good thing about doing it this way is that you're guaranteed to have a full tray with no wasted space. There we go, that one, look at that. Just gently give him a little twiddle to encourage his roots in, being careful not to snap. It's ever so easy. It's very therapeutic as well. It's quite nice to have a podcast on or something. This one, again, it's got lots of compost around it, which is a good thing. So I will move it across. I'll just push some compost into the bottom of that hole, and lower him in. So it's easier just to put a whole load of compost on top and then you can cherry pick those that need to be dibbed in against those that need to be lowered and then backfilled in. I've got a couple of slightly smaller ones. So it's just as well that I've pricked them out now because they will probably be in shadowed by the bigger boys in the tray. 
but now they've got an adequate light water and nutrients. They'll be able to catch up in no time. Just got a few more, hopefully we've got enough to fill this tray up completely. So you can see, there we go. Slightly bigger hole. Just tucking them in gently. Okay. And the compost supports the little seedling and keeps it upright. Go, all settled in. So very quickly now, I'm going to take them over and put them in a tray of water. Don't forget your label. Here are some that I did about half an hour ago. You can see the compost is lovely and moist and that is settling the water, which is soaking up through the compost, is now settling it around all the little roots. So I shall take this out now and just leave it to drain just for a little while before I put it on the shelf because the bottom tray will be flooded with water at the moment. I'm just now doing the Madam Butterfly. This is the colour blend. Now, if your snapdragons are smaller than mine, there's a few reasons. Number one, you may well have started them later. Number two, your greenhouse might not be in the right location. Now, if you did start them late, you need to be careful because with snapdragons, as with all other plants, but because they're so sl slow growing, it's more obvious. When the light levels drop, they're going to stop growing completely. So they're just gonna stay a static size all winter. So don't panic if they just suddenly stop growing because of the light levels. But just check your greenhouse is in the right place. And if they're really small and it's cold at night, bring them indoors at night time, just to get them going. Make sure they go out during the day so they don't get leggy. But that can just help give them a little jump start. But please don't sow them in November December or January, because the light levels are just so low, you'll get them to germinate and then they'll just be really sick, fragile plants. You're better off just waiting and sunning them in late winter. That's the reason why the snapdragons is one of the first ones that we do sow, because they can take that a little bit longer. They're a perennial after all, so they're not as fast out of the traps as the cornflowers, for example. Here are my snapdragon seedlings. I'm just gonna pop a propagator lid on over the top because that will help keep the environment nice and humid while they establish. So fast forward 48 hours. These are the exact same seedlings that I put out for you on the video. And look at them standing up to attention and you can see this one next door. Can you see how humid the environment is? So all that's doing is it's keeping all the moisture around the leaves so they don't lose too much moisture while they're establishing in their new home. It's just a sensible precaution. So I'm gonna leave this on for a couple more days. Just watch out if it's really sunny, of course, make sure. I would actually move the tray out of direct sunlight if it's a really sunny day. And then just keep your propagator lid on for a few more days and then they will be fine to stand on their own two feet. Fast forward, it has now been another 24 hours and you can see they're basking in the sunshine. So the lids have been removed during the day for the heat and they look so well settled that I'm not gonna bother now putting the lids back on at night. They've had their helping hand, but they look very happy and very well settled indeed. So that should be enough for them. Fast forward again, it has been six days since I pricked out and potted on these snapdragon seedlings. This is the tray from right at the beginning of the video. And you can see that fluffy, fluffy compost has given them plenty of air around the roots. They've got their own space, plenty of light, water and nutrients, and they have visibly grown in this short period of time. The sun has just come out. So today it is the 29th of October. <laughs>